All right, we are doing a quick audio check here for the North Tama live stream. Indeed. Uh, I'm Levi LaRue. I'm here with Jackson uh, Daniels. With Jackson Daniels, part of the tech team. And we are just checking to make sure that it is working. Indeed. All right, it appears that our headsets are working. Audio is working great. So at this time, we will mute ourselves. We will keep on the live stream, though. Uh, the game will be back in about 25 minutes. Uh, I'm Levi. This is Jackson. And you're watching the North Team of Red Hawk YouTube channel.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's football game between the Hudson Pirates and your North Tama Red Hawks. Please give a big thank you to those people who help host on Friday nights in the press box. Wayne Jansen, Jeff Jacobs, Rick Samuelson, John Dobb, Bruce Morrison, and the NT Tech team, Levi LaRue, and Keith Kennedy. Doing the chains, Sam Hume, John Schreier, Nathan Urban, and Mark Urban. A special thank you to members of the Cubic Finch post number 142 and the Hora Mahashek post number 453. Color guard for presenting the colors tonight. And our flag raisers from North Tama Youth Football under the direct er, William and Elliot duties. Please thank these people with a round of applause for the volunteer work they do. Their dedication to North Tama football is outstanding. Before tonight's game, the Iowa High School Athletic Association, North Tama, and Hudson Schools would like to remind all spectators and participants that conduct counts at Iowa high school events. Disrespectful or disruptive behaviors, language, or interference are unacceptable and subject to ejection from tonight's game. Let the officials officiate, the coaches coach, and the players play. Officials for tonight's game are Jeff Carson, Nate Steggy, Josh Bevins, Phil Johnson, and Griffin Carr. Starters for the Pirates on defense tonight are 59, Caden Kryle. Defensive tackle, number 57, Kaysen Ingemels. Defensive tackle, number 74, Jaden Heasley. Defensive end, number 72, Andrew Godden. Linebacker, number 5, Lyle Olson. Linebacker, number 23, Gavin Richter. Linebacker, number 36, Noah Borshinen. Quarterback, number two, Isaac Messmore. Quarterback, number 28, Caleb Ham. Safety, number four, Kean Kryle. And safety, number nine, Carter Baden. And starting for your Red Hawks on offense tonight, at tackle, number 54, Caden Cannon. At guard, number 63, Ryan Hushett. At center, number 64, Mason Hushett. At guard, number 53, Aiden Stacker. At tackle, number 50, Tyler Papelka. At wide receiver, number 24, Logan Siemens. At wide receiver, number 8, Lucas DeBooth. At wide receiver, number 7, Gavin Rausch. At wide receiver, number 5, Josh Dostol. At running back, number 43, Michael Schreier. 
And at quarterback number four, Colt Knett. Head coach for Hudson is Justin Brecky, assisted by John Austin, Joe Bonson, Keith Harms, and Mark Schmadeke. Head coach for the Red Hawks is Taylor Worth, assisted by Bryce Gherkin, Dalton Hume, Andrew Knack, and Luke Zavora. Tonight, we honor our country and remember our veterans, both past and present. At this time, please rise and remove your hats as the North Cayman Band plays the national anthem. Keith should have some fun tonight because uh, longtime volleyball coach Bobby Peterson has his two, has her two twin girls that play for UNI this year, so that should be an interesting tribute to that family. Yeah, and they always have a strong team up there, and and Keith does that as his actual job, but helps out here. But we've got a good game tonight, a rivalry game before a big rivalry game tomorrow. Obviously, we have North Tama and Hudson. Um, this year, both teams coming in at one and one. North Tama won their first game 34 to six against Bell Plain and then lost 28 to zero last week at AGWSR Hudson their first week. They won 37 zero at Jessup. Last week lost a nail biter 14 13 against BCLUW. Last year, North Tama did win this game 30 to six. Obviously North Tama last year getting one game away from the dome. Uh, a lot of new faces out there. That first game looked like the same offense as last year, right? Yes, I nope. think it is because I think Coach is very consistent in what he wants to do and what he wants to accomplish. I don't think he wants to change things too much, but he will adjust to his personnel like any good head coach. What is my personnel? 
what do I have to work with and how do we win? So I'll do what it takes to win like any team member will do. Yeah, and he's got a sophomore quarterback, Colt Kanak, who didn't, he saw the field a lot as a freshman last year, a lot on defense, but comes in and obviously you had uh, Gabe Capriva leading the state in almost every passing category last year, and Colt picked up about where it was left off last year. Well, two weeks ago, he come firing out of the gate with six or five touchdowns to set a school record, so that's a good start for the sophomore. So North Tama is going to receive first from the kick from Hudson. It'll be Logan Siemens bringing it back for the Red Hawks. Good coverage by the Pirates. He's down just across the 20. So here comes Colt Kanak, the sophomore, number four. Like Coach said here, great first game. Last game, you know, a struggle on offense, but still had a pretty decent, I mean, stat line, not nearly as good yes, as this. Yes, well, uh, well, a good coach game. has something on film. They know how to stop yep. what you do well, so. And AGWSR. This should be game number three for both teams, and yep. they should have ironed out what they want to accomplish. We got a couple differing styles here. North Hamill wants to throw the ball all over the place. Hudson is very much a rushing team. They average 280 yards on the ground a game in two games. That's pretty impressive. Well, that your offensive line play probably leads away for the Pirates and the very well coached, disciplined team. Uh, if you remember, just five short years ago, they were undefeated state champions. So the coaching staff is still there, and they're developing their young people just like we do, also. So it'll be a first and 15 for the Red Hawks from what looks like about the 14 yard line. Put Schreier in motion, but we've got another procedure penalty by the Red Hawks. It'll be first and 20. Not a great start here for North Tama. Well, sometimes I'm opening play jitters happens. Um, we got new people in the offensive line there switching from what they did last week. So maybe it takes a little time or two to do that. But again, um, that's part of development in high school. Uh, coach has developed their players as they as and who they are. Yeah, I noticed he moved uh, Ryan Hushick over and Caden Canning, get, Caden Canning getting the start at tackle tonight. So they made a shift in the offensive line there to make some adjustments. And it's Cole Kanak with the quarterback keeper. One of their bread and butter plays on running. Yeah, Schreier's listed as the running back. He's not, he kind of moves all over the place. He's been a receiver his whole career, and now they got him in the backfield, but you won't see him very often actually getting a handoff. He'll, they'll move him around. Or at, use him for extra blocker, so a very versatile senior for the Red Hawks. We got a screen Look set a screen up. set up here. It's a good play call right there, good. but I wonder if there's going to be a hold I, coming back. I believe that's an area of holding because that happened pretty quick, pretty fast. So I think they're trying to get develop the screen, and they released their guy and didn't quite let him go because they they kind of snuffed up that screen play pretty quick. That must be tough for parents whose kids are linemen because the only time they ever get recognized is when they get a penalty. Exactly. It's just so unfair in life. But I know. You happens. hear that all the time in football. You're, you always hear it. You're, if you're doing your job as a lineman, they're not saying your name. But everybody knows your name, though, if you're exactly. doing it. <laughs> so it'll be second and 19 for the Red Hawks. Actually, it should be further than that. Should be second in like forever right now. Yeah, it feels almost, like with your back to the end yeah. zone. So we're going to go over the empty backfield here for the Red Hawks. So second we'll see 24. what coach we'll see what coach dialed up. And it's a quick pass to the flat. I do believe that's Deboof, if I can tell. So it'll be third and a mile for the Red Hawks, deep in their own territory. Well, third and a very well executed play will get you a first down. So we'll see what coach dials up. At the very least, you want to get some breathing room here for special teams. Exactly. You don't want to be punting from your end zone. Oh, 
We're gonna roll Kanak out. Oh, he had him in, it was almost intercepted. And he kind of likes to have that flat pass to his uh, Gavin Roush. Him and Gavin have hooked up along with was Josh Dolstol so many times in their junior high uh, years that there's, it's kind of like a pass they go to. Just quite out of his fingertips, couldn't quite reach it. Brings up fourth and 20 for the Red Hawks. Special teams, do your thing, and uh, we'll be in good shape. Coach Werther's tenure here. He has liked to go for it on fourth, but I don't know if he's going to go for it on fourth and his own 13-yard line. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> no They're actually comment. lining up to punt. It'll be connect back to punt. Good sideline kick there, going directional, kind of getting him use the out-of-bounds area. Excellent cutback there for Hudson, number two. Yeah, that was Isaac Messmore there with the cutback, and they will have it in plus territory here two minutes into the game. Well, the Red Hawks, their defense is going to have to start out here and uh, try to get a stop uh, on a first down here and hold the position, what they're going to do, and keep their back from getting farther against the wall. Defense uh, did a great job that first game, only giving up the one touchdown. Yes. Last game against a really tough running back for AGWSR. Yes. I was told he was a pretty good-sized boy. He, yes. They're going to pass first. Yep. Out to Kryle. Yep. Nice good flat pass out there, get a screen, you have your, some of your interior linemen and runmen come out there and give them some support on that. So that was a well executed first play for the Pirates. Brings up second and three for the Pirates at the, believe, I wanna say 29. Yeah, it's Camden Davis, number 12, the quarterback for Hudson. He is a junior, he's 6'3", he's got some good size. Gonna pass again. Looking for that out route. Oh, oh and they tried to so jump it. So close. So close. Well, Caleb DeBoof went for this pick six and uh, basically kind of went over a little bit over his head. So Yeah, he tried to jump the route and so it looks like Hudson's gonna surprise people and gonna try to get their running game and developed and so let you know that we can throw when we want to, and now it's gonna be should be in theory. Here come linemen, it's your job. Like I said, they come in, they average 280 yards on the ground a game, 101 through the air, but they come out throwing. That's Borsherding and might have lost a yard. Yes. Excellent stop by I think it's Siemens in there. Nope, it's not, it's Mason Hushick. So good job, Mason, for the Red Hawks. Got in the backfield there, shed his blocker. I think he had gap responsibility and took that right away, so. Good play for the Red Hawks. Noah Borshooting, number 36, the starting tailback for Hudson. He averages about 100 yards a game. That's going to be a quarterback sneak by yep. Davis. Yes, it looks like it's going to get down inside the one, but not quite, quite in. Like I said, he's 6'3". Do it a couple more times. Well, you know... Coach, I'm not very tall, so sometimes I have to go in the gap and just kind of puddle in there. I, I, I'm not a lean forward like a quarterback from Buffalo last night where basically he's 6'6 six, six, six and just leans over yep. and gets it in Big there. Big body so, and just. Yep. So here we go. Line against line here, and let's see who gets their responsibilities and get off the ball. Porsche going to go outside. Oh, what a tackle oh, right there. Awesome job. I do believe that's, what, number five? I don't have a program in front of That is Josh Dolstel, number Josh five. Josh Dolstel. So again, that, soft, that uh, sophomore class, again, uh, shows up big there. That was a great stop by Josh. Obviously a touchdown saving tackle. So as a coach, you just want to see that your young people develop like that. And when they come at you, they're not afraid to come up, step up, and make the tackle. So that's actually a little bit for a loss there, I think. So Yeah, it's going to be fourth and goal on the three now. So. I don't know. I, I'm thinking they're going to pass on this. Let's see how get lucky I'm guessing tonight. So I'm going with you. Motion. Hey, look, we're nope. both wrong. Right up the middle. Oh, good, good hit. Good First hit right the there. Hawks. 53. Ryan, Ryan Hushett. That was Aiden Stacker, I believe. 53 had the first hit. Yep. Stopped him and then had some help. We're going to let everybody get credit yeah. on that one. It doesn't matter who gets the credit as long as they're not in the end zone. So exactly. That's a very big stop for the Red Hawks right that's there. It's a lot of that confidence for the defense. A little momentum in there and have a short field to work with. And, and 
first and goal inside the five. So that's outstanding job for a team that just racked up multiple yards on the ground. Mack in his own end zone. He's just going to... Yep. Like he, gets said, it, he likes to it, do that sneak. Well, basically, that is their running game. Yeah. If they're going to cover all their guys, you're, you're, you're basically reading to see where your safeties and your strong Mike guys are going to be. And if they're not going to be there and there's nobody in the gap, it's just as good as a run. So, again, you, you know, as an offensive coach, you do not want the defense to know, guessing what we're going to do. Because when they stop guessing, that's not good. They're going to go five wide. Empty backfield in the end zone, so good snap. Oh, going deep, he's is. got a man that, wide open. Michael Schreier, nice get up in the air and bring that thing down. Excellent throw by Kanak. Plenty of time, stepped into the throw. Good play for the Red Hawks, good play. Put it where only his receiver could catch it and his tallest receiver right there. Good to have him healthy for the whole year. Yes, he's well, some let's, issues let's not jinx him yet quite, Coach. Oh, geez, why did I got, do it? We got six to seven more games left to go. Maybe all the way to the Dome if we get if we execute correctly, so. Now he'll line up next to Kanak, and we've got another false start. Looks to me like the ball got placed or moved. Mason Hussick is just kind of struggling just a little bit right now with that. So we're going to bring in uh, Drake Podaski probably to come in and do the snapping. And sometimes, you know, when you're, you're, you're asked to do something, you're, you're, you're learned to be a guard, and all of a sudden now you're the center of attention, and maybe you have to make calls. So that sometimes can unnerve you just a little bit. That was too high for Siemens. It's a long throw, too, all the way to the long side of the field. Also a dangerous throw, too. So, But he had to get that off fast enough so that wasn't reactive very good. So we're down to another long situation for the Red Hawks here. So hopefully we can execute another big play like we did in the last, last series. So we're, we're certainly capable of doing it. And yeah, North Hamas still has, I mean, obviously didn't score last week, but they still have that explosive offense. That it's, they had. It's there. It's not yeah. a grind him out down the field uh, 12 play drive. They were going to roll him out to his right. Yep. But a good tackle right there by Hudson. So short gain. I believe that was Siemens on the catch, but I'm yep. not quite sure. But I can see the number from Hudson. He was there right away. Made a sure tackle. And it's going to bring up another. We're going to have fourth and eight. Third and long. Or third Let's and eight. Sorry, I'm off by I'm That's off all right, by one Coach, because we'll let that happen. Counting is hard. <laughs> You're not talking to a math student here, Coach. I'm guaranteeing you right now. Yep. So, But if I can get two to two to four, we'll be fine. Again, we put Schreier in kind of in motion in a pistol formation. And we're going to go oh, back. Oh, batted down at the line. Oh. I, think he, I think he was going back to... Uh, Yep. Dostal again there. I believe that's in the corner there. And basically, Lyman, if you can't get to the quarterback, get your hand up when the ball is thrown. That's basic, fundamental, good defensive Lyman play. That was Andrew Gaudian, number 72. Got his hand up there. Hudson's only given up 14 points all year, and that was in their last game. So... There we saw Nortema do this where they line. Oh, oh not a great punt. Cole did not get that run really good He there. did not, but. His, li his lineman did, but. Yeah. Okay, so defense, here we got to the challenge again. We got to stiffen up here and pretty much familiar territory that happened the last ser uh, series that Hudson had. Again, deep in their territory and uh, came out throwing. So let's see if they. Continue the ground game here, maybe go back to their bread and butter, and hopefully the Red Hawks will come on in here and stuff this again. So, again, if you can stop the early momentum, you can stay in the game, and all of a sudden the tide can turn. Put Messmore in motion back, yep, backfield. They pitch it to there. him, but he's got nowhere Post to go. Post of Red Hawks. Excellent defense. I think the booth threw him Mason, down, but it was. Mason Hussick yeah. right there that was kind of made him stop, slow down, and a. 
help. Here comes, just keep him there and let your friends come to the rescue. So excellent play by the Red Hawks. A five yard loss brings a second and long. So if our defense hopefully doesn't have to be our offense, we'll be fine. But this is a good start for a defense with Red Hawks. Seen Hudson do a lot of different things already in this game and they really haven't found anything that works yet. Or shooting gets back yep. to the original line maybe or just short. Yep. It looks like uh, I, I think it was Ryan Hushik on the tackle there. Brings up third and about 11 for the Pirates. And coach brings in a play. They're all looking at their play chart on there. Hopefully he doesn't dial up the right play for us. But third and 11 should be. We'll see how that early passing game, if it helps them or they stick to the run. This is probably four down territory, I would assume. I would think he would. Fake the pitch of Borshading. He's going to roll to his right. He's got a man, nice, number 28. Nice design play. That's a great play. Nice design play in there. Kind of a reverse rollout. Gives your quarterback plenty of time to stop, look, survey the field, uh, and come across from the flat there. And was wide open and ball on time. And a good play executed by Hudson. Now it's Caleb Ham, number 28, with the reception. That was a very good play. And right at the sticks, too. That's another thing is when you even, I mean, it was third down, so even if you run it and you're a yard short, you're going to go for it anyway. But a lot of times you see receivers, especially on fourth down, they don't go all the way to the sticks. You always want to you always see your senior receiver get over the first down mark. Get over that and make the reception, and then you're in good territory. Quarterback keeper kind of roll out here. Gets positive yards, maybe five or six. And I'm wondering if that's kind of what Hudson is going to do, is they're going to also, their running game maybe, I don't know, I haven't seen them on film, so I'm not, I'm speaking out of just guessing out that maybe that, you know, a guy that size in the backfield is your quarterback. Maybe they were watching the Bills last night and decided they're going to run the ball a little bit with like them. We can do what Josh Allen does. That's true, but uh, we can be Josh Allen, but we can think we can. Second and four. Roll out to the left. Man, got wide, a man open, wide open, wide open in the end zone. Touchdown for the Pirates. Jackson Hyatt, number 87, the senior receiver. That was a good design play, too. It seems like they did a good job of bringing their uh, receivers in, freezing the safety, then going back out on that, if I think that's what I actually saw. So that was a well-executed uh, drive for the Pirates, unlike their first one. So um, our, our Hawks defense decided we were going to take care of it there, but... Us and, you know, if you execute the play almost to perfection, it's hard to stop, and that's Pirates will take a 6-0 lead. Extra point, great kick by number five, Lyle Olson, in his 7-0 Pirates with two minutes to go here in the first quarter. We're going to run some sponsors. Wano's True Value in U.S. Sailor, located on 2nd Street here in Traer, is your one-stop shop for all your hardware needs. They are also a licensed U.S. Sailor retailer, so if you're looking for a hammer and a cell phone or a wrench and a hotspot, Jay and his team can help you out. Please visit them on 2nd Street or give them a call at 319-478-2602. Joe Morrison State Farm is located right here in Trayer on 2nd Street. Joe and his team can offer you great insurance at a great price. Whether that be for your car, your home, your business, or life insurance, Joe's got you covered. Visit him on 2nd Street or give him a call at 319-478-8310. Junior college down there, so... Matter of fact, I got a text message from them the other hey. day. So, well, yeah, we're we got. Oh man, you got Aiden Zook and Nathan Kachera talking about. Oh, you. the, the fastest lineman in the country the, there. Oh yeah, Nathan Kachera. Easily. <laughs> See, we get you on here. We bring out the big guns. Gavin Roush with the reception here. He's Gets a little bit opening, and if he right. can get there far enough, and a great run back for Gavin. 
Should bring the ball up close to about the 45. Excellent special teams of the Red Hawks there. Excellent job of Gab. Another sophomore that is developing with this program. So we basically had to ask our sophomores to do a lot this year. And our juniors and seniors are doing an excellent job, but our, our sophomores had to you know grow up in a hurry. That they and did. They're, and they're doing a quite good job. And yes, Aiden, there's a number 11 out there for Hudson, but there's only going to be one a number 11 in my eyes. So Aww. there you go. And there's only one Nathan Kachera, so. Of course. Not a lot looks of time. like a draw there. Yep. Design draw. Kanak looks like he gets a good positive yard gain there. We also got some people watching at the windup. I'm sure there's people watching at the junkyard. Well, I think last week we had as many as, I think Keith told me we had as many as 75 people. So I'm. Oh, we're up. We're at 128. We just I, gotta get you I on. think we got to get to we 150. Just, I'm, we just the goal get is 150. On so folks, just get on there, text somebody, tell them to get on there, and hopefully they're. And I'll bet they're watching out at the uh, golf course, too. That could be. We do like to know where you're watching from, so let us know, even if it's in Hudson or in Traer. Yep, Cole with a good Josh Allen imitation there again, straight up the middle, uh, looking at the reading your defensive backs are they, and uh, on the way they go. So when you run that spread, you're, you know, if you're a high school kid, you're looking for somebody to see that ball is probably going to be passed first. But if you get one-on-one uh, -on -one blocking, if you got maybe four linemen, five on four, you get a double team there in the middle, and you execute a play. So the good Red Hawks are right now, they're looking like they're starting to get into a rhythm here. Just got to feel each other out here for a quarter. And yeah, and this is the run game that North Hamid did last year with Caprivo. It was that quarterback run. There's a screen. Yep, another you screen tell. again to Gavin Roush here. Ooh, and he's met right away. Good job by number 23, Gavin Richter. Roush is second in Class A in catches, and a lot of that was from that first game. I don't know how many catches he had that first game, but it was Well, a lot of it has to do lot. with, you know, last two weeks, coaches had to develop a sophomore quarterback. He's very comfortable with the guys that he grew up with, played with from the junior high on up, and uh, by design, you got some wide receivers that clear the area, and, and Roush kind of just sneaks in there, and, and Cole has a lot of uh, security blanket for him to do that. All right, end of the first quarter, and Hudson leads 7-0. to zero. We're going to run some sponsors. Went Tire, located on the south side of Trey, is your one-stop shop for all your automotive service needs, including oil changes, brakes, shocks, alignment, and, of course, your tire needs. Visit them right off Highway 63 or give them a call at 319-478-8022 for more information. Don't have a church family? Come visit the Trare United Presbyterian Church. Starting on Sunday, September 18th, there is adult Sunday school from 8.30 to 9.20. Worship service begins at 9.30, followed by a youth Sunday school and confirmation class at 10.30. All are welcome. Sibling Blooming, located on 2nd Street in Traer. Lisa and her team can help you with all your flower and gift needs for any occasion. Please check out Sibling Blooming or give them a call at 319-478-8585. All right, we're back here to 7-0. 7-0 Pirates, 12 minutes in. Nortema's got the ball here, just inside of uh, Hudson Territories. We start the second quarter. They put Schreier in motion. It's a yes, that, pass. that play's been set up for yep. a while here. Good stretch. Well, not now, quite enough to the first down there, but that was now, a well. Because, because that was a backwards pass, do you maybe later in the game well, throw that and then have Schreier... That's a play where the guys upstairs kind of say, hey, they're not covering him. They're not taking care of him. It's there. See if you can sneak someone back. Yes. And so that's, that play was set up for a while because they've run yep. him, Michael, in motion for a while in a swing out. So, again, coach is trying to keep the Pirates off balance. Is like you're not sure what you're going to see. So 
It'll be third down and two. We'll see what the Red Hawks do. They go pistol formation. Nope, they're going to move Schreier over. And we've got another penalty. Hudson claps. Mouth guard. And I think this is the fifth procedure penalty by the Red Hawks. I think we had a mouth guard there, but I'm not quite sure. No, I'll be. And that's something they gotta they gotta execute right away. Yeah, so we do have Newton Kuchar out in Wyoming watching. Awesome. People watching from the Hudson Fire Convent. Oh, with Hudson Fire at the Fire Convention in Iowa Falls. Up to 141. Look at that. We're got to get over 150, week. folks. Got to get over 150. 150. Come on. 200. We'll start with 150. Good flat pass out there. He's going to be right at the stick. He's going to be short. He's going to be half a yard short. You're half a yard short of the sticks there. So, but is that one of those? Well, I think coach is going to definitely go for this. Well, yeah, he's, obviously. He's, he's gone for. It. Uh, fourth down situation, so he's he's not afraid to uh, throw the wheel of fortune out there and, and gamble and see what's going to happen. So now, if this was the Iowa Hawkeyes, it'd be fourth and one on the 39. They'd punt. Touche. <laughs> I don't have any room to talk because Iowa State hasn't won in ages. Well, that's the reason why maybe Kirk Ferentz is the longest active Division One coach in the country right now, is because he's. He is conservative. He outs his defense to work. and uh, But he knows what he's got. He knows what he has. And it works. Now, if you're playing Ohio State, you don't. The longer they got to drive, the better off you're going to be. So, Oh, Dylan Hushik on. We had him on last week at a little pregame show. It's good to, when he comes back to listen to an next player give his expertise, national champion there, watching from Sioux City. Next, got a lot of time. Oh, there's going to be a hold yep. there. There, that'll be. A, there's going to be a hold there on the Red Hawks because. Well, we've got a hold back here too, though. In okay, the, maybe we're getting lucky here in offset penalties yep. here, and we'll start all over. Uh, it looked like 28 Caleb Ham had a piece of uh, jersey of Dolstal there, so we might have double double hold. I tell you what, I'm glad I don't have to put those jerseys over those shoulder pads because. The, when the guys take them off to go in the shop class, there's like they're like taking off spandex on them things. Those things are really, really tight. And they go, how do you get them on? They they're say, a lot well, tighter than back in the day. Well, you got to sit there and put it on first, and then two guys got to put it on. So those things are are meant not to grab and hold. So. All right, so they're gonna offset, and we're gonna do it again. Well, North Tame has found a little bit of a rhythm here on offense, finally. They have. Just got to be consistent on, and disciplined. Good positive play. The fake the fake pitch to Schreier and gets positive yards. Connect, you know, if, if, if you're a coach and you can get three or four yards off that play, you're not going to be afraid to call that. As long as, as Hudson's not going to let the big play and they're going to, looks like they're trying to say, okay, you're going to have to march it down the field on us and execute. 10 or 12 plays to perfection. So, so far that is, looks like the game plan for the Pirates is just basically we're not going to give up any big plays if we can and just make you work down the field. Roll out by Kanak. Oh. Throws a pick. He got, he got in a hurry there. He was under harassment there a little bit and threw it to an area, I'm going to guess. And That was picked off by number five, Lyle Olson. We saw that la I saw that last night on the Bills uh, Rams game last night where you're under duress and the ball gets, doesn't get thrown to the right spot. So Especially if it's a timing play where yep. they take X amount of steps and he's going to yep. stop and turn. And again, yeah. Hudson, make them drive the ball out mistake-free down the field. So, But our defense so far has done a very good job. So, I mean, last time Hudson scored, and it was off that big pass play, plus they had a short field because of the bad punt. Yes. Oh, here comes a blitz right up the middle. Yep. Picked up really well. And that was 23, Gavin Richter running the ball. Only got a couple there. 
Looks like the coach decided he's going to put somebody up there and force them wide um, and take a risk a little bit on some stuff. So um, it's sad to say in my glorious junior high coaching days, I'd like to put in a number 11 in there and blitz on both sides of the poor center and maybe blow up a play. So. Go off right tackle up. trap there. Yeah, nothing there. Excellent job of Michael Schreier there. Stuffed his man, forced him inside, and a host of friends come in there and, and cleaned up the play. So That brings down third down for the Pirates, four from about the 39-yard line. So we're getting in midfield territory. Uh, the playbook should be wide open one way or the other. So let's see if the Red Hawks can establish another third down stop. Oh, we got a timeout. So Hudson's going to call a timeout. They're going to think about what they're going to do. Maybe get your players, uh, maybe a fish. It's time for you to join the Traer Golf and Country Club. Located just north of Traer on Highway 63, the Traer Golf and Country Club has membership options for people of all ages. Whether you're a student golfer, a single golfer, a family of golfers, or just want to enjoy the clubhouse, the Traer Golf and Country Club has you covered. Please give them a call at 319-478-2700 to join today. Rugged Edge Cuts is a new salon that has opened up here in Traer. Call, text, or walk in for an incredible haircut. Rugged Edge Cuts offers haircuts for men, women, and children from Mindy, an experienced, licensed cosmetologist. Stop in and see Mindy at her shop at 539 2nd Street right here in Traer. Or call or text at 319-240-2131 for your next appointment. Muted. All right, we're back after the Hudson timeout here. They got a third and seven on their own 42-yard line. So playbook, like Coach said here, playbook was wide open right here. Let's see what... They, oh, got, oh, oh, they're trying to cross play, over here, and it's going to work out. That's it's going to work out for him. I think he's going to get it by just a yep. step or two there. That was kind of a cross counter there where two is lined up as a wing back on the right-hand side. You're not looking for him. All the motion is going that way, and those good big white jerseys in front of you kind of conceal everything, and and uh, run a kind of little reverse counter there. So, and that could have been a lot worse because Davis ran into his running back, and then yep, that could have been a really, really huge yeah. play, but it got stuffed up a little bit there. So, midfield for the Pirates. They use motion again. They're going to go straight up the middle with Richter. Nothing there. A Red Hawk loses a helmet. I think that's Aiden Stacker. Yes, so it is. Come Number out for 53. a play. Hasn't, so, been, hasn't been much up the middle for Hudson. No, but I think, you know, if you've established it in the past, you don't want to totally get away from it. Um, if you have superior size on your offensive line, just wear them down. Maybe you don't see it in the first half, but the second half, it just kind of starts paying dividends. So. Davis going to roll out to his right. Nothing there. He's going to pull fakes. it down. Makes a heads, good decision. Heads for the first down, Mark. He might have got that. Good coverage back there by the Red Hawks, but I, he's going to be right at it. They're going to not give it to him. That's a good. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He's going to be a couple yards short. Yep, that's, was, that's a good skill set for their quarterback because he's a long, tall gentleman. He can throw. He can run. He can kind of see over the defense a little bit and see what is there and, and make his choice at the last minute. So... But sooner or later, I'm, I'm wondering if Hudson's going to open this thing up and try to go for something big because they really haven't yet. So. Well, we've got timeout Red Hawks now, so we will go and do some more of our great sponsors. Pizza Palace, located on Highway 63 in Traer, has been serving hot, delicious pizza for nearly 20 years. Make sure to check out their Facebook page for their monthly pizza specials. You can dine in carry out or rent out their private party room that seats up to 50 people. Open Tuesday through Friday from 4.30 to 9 p.m. Give them a call at 319-478-2281 to order your next pizza. 
Pillar Insurance's mission is to make the insurance fit your needs versus you fitting the insurance company. They represent multiple companies so they can find the right company at the right price. They can cover your home, vehicle, farm, business, and much more. Ed and Chad are licensed in the state of Iowa, while Carmen is licensed in Iowa, Wisconsin, and Illinois. So if your needs cross multiple state lines, they can cover all in one location. Give them a call or reach out to them at PillarInsuranceIowa.com. Oh, excellent stop there by Ryan Hushik. Shoved his guard in the backfield and made a tremendous stop. So excellent defense by the interior play of the Red Hawks here. Fourth and two, they're going to hurry it up here. Looks like they're going to try to draw him offside. And it's another timeout for Hudson. So we're going to go back and we're going to see some more of our sponsors. And we appreciate them so very much, our sponsors for our program. Do you need lawn care service? If so, we've got the perfect solution at Perfect Circle LLC. Perfect Circle can take care of your mowing and yard cleanups, tree and bush maintenance or removal, landscaping, power washing, and snow removal needs. Call now to get perfect service from Perfect Circle LLC at 319 939-2168 or check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Perfect Circle LLC. Talk to Aiden for your free estimate. All right, we are back here as Hudson is still huddling up. We've got a fourth down and two. This is a critical play right now because uh, if they can get the first down, that extends the, the clock and the halftime and and North Tame would sure like to get a stop right here and give about, about six minutes left to make a drive of their own. They are going to punt. But Hudson will punt. Long, high, tall. Well, North, North oh, Tame will oh. take that. Oh, they'll take that 15-yard punt at the 25. So 75 yards in six minutes and 11 seconds for the Red Hawks to try to drive. We have the capability of doing this, uh, explosive plays, but... Again, you have to go with what the get defense gives you. Can you just sustain a drive? We're up to 157 people, by the way. So that's awesome. Yes. But I guess I'm, I'm greedy, Coach. Let's go Let's go 175. Yeah, I said we should go to 200. Well, let's go 175. we got to get there first. Okay. Baby steps here. Kanak will roll out. Borsherding right on him, and he faked and him out. Just, just no win there. Hudson well covered. Both the booth coming out on the on a long play and a crossing pass, so that play was covered. That was going nowhere, and that's the only thing Colt could really do is throw that away. So, again, your sophomore is making good decisions. His third third game of the year, and he's starting to make veteran decisions, uh, much like Gabe Capriva did a year ago. So, I mean, he learned from one of the best. So. Sat behind him last year, and uh, it helps when your head show. It helps when your head coach used to play quarterback in high school. Yeah, and at U and I. So, <laughs> fake the pitch. Looks like they're setting up they're that screen the in the screen middle. Screen they again, are. Man, that was, oh, he did break a tackle. He did have there that had a lot of possibilities, but that's a long uh, number nine snuffed that yep. thing out. He saw that coming in there, and. I guess when you see that your defensive linemen get in the backfield way too easy that something's coming up. So. And that play takes a long time to develop, too, but we could see it from up here. As Dulcel had to come all the way from over by the sideline in. and It's all about timing, Coach, and that timing was executed, but Hudson's defense was up to the challenge. And they've been up to the challenge this week. They're shutting out a potent offense here as we near halftime. It's the third down and six. Flat pass to DeBoof. Just a little no, high. No, Josh Dostal, excuse yep. me. A little bit high. And that's one that you, you almost got to throw in a rope because if you hang that one at all, it's pick six for someone else. So that's why when you see somebody in the college ranks or the NFL, how can they do that? Because just average Joes like us, like we could only dream of No, they make it look that. so easy too. The only way we win on that was put them on our fantasy team. <laughs> Fourth and six, connect back to punt. Much better punt Good, than last high time. High driving one. 
Very good nice punt by Nice roll for the Red Hawks. Oh, that's beautiful right nice, there. Nice, good 15-yard roll there. So take it what you can get every time. <coughs> so that only took one, about a minute and five seconds off the clock there. That would like to have that drive take us just a little bit more time. But again, we're going to ask the Red Hawks defense to step in up again and stop the Hudson one more time. Hudson comes in a wing back formation with two men outside. And this is a sweep to the left wide side of the field. Four shooting tries to get outside and there's really nothing there. A host yes. of Red Hawks take it down. out by Red Hawks galore. My mom says hi. Hi mom. As my parents near their uh, Let's see if I get this right. 41st wedding anniversary this coming week. You're that young? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You only look 35, Coach, me. Well, or 25? Well, they've been married almost 41 years. So. Okay. You're, you're, you're gleaming their eye at one time. Yep. Yeah. Had, had an opening right away, but it closed quickly. Again, Hudson's starting to go back to that power game a little bit now. They're going back to their bread and butter. A little bit more runs up the middle. Uh, and uh, kind of like their game plan is starting to work for them. So obviously with four minutes left, you'd like to control the ball. You'd love to have a touchdown quick if you can, if you're Hudson. But in the meantime, keeping the ball means you, the other team does not score. And, and no, Nor uh, North Hama did receive the opening kick, so Hudson will get it first after halftime. So this could be a two possession thing for them. And North Hama's defense has been out there a long time a long this time, first half. Coach, a long time. Davis with a good decision. Oh, the Josh Allen yep. right there looks familiar from last night for those of you that watched it on, on, on TV, so. I tell you, for a team that runs so much, Davis has been impressive. Um, he can do, I, I think he can do both. If he yeah. can run and throw, and so he's, again, uh, as a coach, he's got the physical tools that you want in that position if you can get them. Uh, but he's doing with what he's got with what he's have, so. Red Hawks with three down linemen. They're going more of a 3-3-5. Three, three, again, it's, it's almost like three yards in a cloud of dust yep. here. Nothing. Fancy, they're going to use their offensive line, hold their blocks, uh, put a fullback maybe in there once in a while and just said, hey, you got to stop us. So, And I haven't watched any Hudson this year, but I think this is what they wanted to do. I think this is what they want to do. You know, they're kind of feeling, like you said, they both teams kind of felt each other out there for the first It's, it's probably quarter. their identity. Yeah. You know, this is what they do well or they've been able to do, but having a, a passing game sure helps a lot. New running back. I think that was number 20, uh, Slade Schneider, who's a sophomore. I think they're running a trap counter in yep. there. I think that's starting to, they're starting to do some stunting with their linemen there a little bit that helps that maybe springs that up. So I'll have to watch that a little bit closer. You know, God loves the linemen because they got to do their, they're almost like angels that have to do their job and, and protect everybody else. So they're doing a fine job. And I'll see if the well, Red Hawks defense can come in and, Beast out here, third and one. Excellent run, drags down the field. Excellent run for Hudson there. Yeah, Richter with the run went off tackle and carried a defender a little bit. Cut inside and then made a little sidestep to the outside and got some space there. So I, I, I think they're at, Hudson's identity is starting to show up. Hey, here. 173. Okay, but it's not 75 yet. It is yet. 75. It's not but good enough. Come on, folks. We know you got somebody out there that you want to have watch and break the record. So Even if be you're watching as a group, just somebody get on the phone. And be, be part of history. Make history. Just so we can rub it in Keith's face? No, I'll, <laughs> I'll take care of that, okay? But I'm just it's great to have that happen. Uh, Another can, good play call right there. That's yes. 87 Hyatt who had the touchdown earlier. Big play, and they're nearing the 10-yard line here as we come within two minutes of the end of the first half. But, yeah, like, this is a, I mean, 
Looks like Hudson here at the end of the first half and good at the beginning of the second half. Um, this is critical. Hey, 175. Sorry, I had to. Okay, this is critical right here, right now for the Red Hawks. We have got a little under two minutes here left in the game. You are down seven to nothing, and any kind of a stop, even if it was a field goal right here, would be just uh, great. But a 14. The North Tampa Vet Clinic. This is Dr. Kanak and her staff. They can help you out with all your animal needs, no matter the size of your animal. You can find them on 2nd Street here in Traer. Give them a call today at 319-478-8411. Members First Community Credit Union is a premier financial institution in central Iowa that offers a unique Me First banking experience. Offering savings and checking, loans and investments, and financial wellness, Members First will always put your financial needs first. Visit them on 2nd Street here in Trer, or give them a call at 1-800-245-6199. During the game, maybe? The beef thing and then the boosters? Yeah, I feel like that's more important here than it is on the stream. Well, there you go. So I don't think I need that back until the end of the game. First and 10 for Hudson. Richter trying to go off tackle, but they're, nothing there. Their strength. Oh, there's balls on oh, the ground. Oh, there's oh, ball, man. but the Pirates Crowell. recover there. Almost Crowell a break for the Red Hawks. So I'm seeing a strong tendency for Hudson to run off the left-hand side there. They've found something that is working for them, so they've been using that strength. Again... One minute and 22 seconds left in the clock here. Second down and about 14 for the Pirates. They're gonna roll, roll them out, out to the right again. Pass, run pass option, I'm sure. Yep, nothing there, good tackle. And that was Michael, Michael Schreier. Schreier. Got him by the shoestrings. Those long arms do come in handy sometimes. Under a minute left with about 50 seconds left. So Hudson kind of has the best of both worlds here. They can run the clock down, and they're also threatening the, the Red Hawks here towards the end of the first half. So taking their time, running the clock. So again, North Tama, critical stop here. If we can stop them, everything's still good at 7 to nothing. But with 30 seconds left, let's see what Hudson decides to do. Another roll design to roll out now. again. And he's in the end zone. End zone. Excellent play for Hudson. Excellent design. Roll out similar to what the Red Hawks have been doing this year. And found his receiver right at the one and got into the end zone. So that is a tough play for the Red Hawks right there. Put it right on the 88. That's Nathan Reber. The junior again, wide receiver. And again, number 12 is very well rounded. He can run, he can throw. He can, he can make decisions on the field there as a junior. So, excellent job, excellent drive for the Hudson Pirates. Point after attempt is good by Olsen. And it is 14 to zero as we have 19 seconds left until halftime here. I tell you what, Davis came in only completing, he was 10 for 24 coming into this game passing. I, I think I think our defense is doing better than you think they are because we were stopping a lot of stuff and they came out trying to throw, trying to establish the throw, and basically right now that is what they're using to score. Their bread and butter is obviously running the ball, but again, third game of the year, they're starting to use their passing game. So North Tama will have to adjust and uh, with 19 seconds left and a kick return here. And Hudson's defense has done a great job. I don't even know that North Tama, I don't think, has been closer than, what, the 35 or 30? Yeah. I mean, I, I just, they really I, shut them down. Just execution over a long period of time. They're going to make us drive the length of the field without mistakes. So <laughs> our win is definitely picking up here. So maybe that cold front that KWWL said was gonna to happen tonight must be rolling through because 
the flag is obviously going to almost get straight here pretty quick. Yeah, so. there was almost no win here at the beginning of the game, and I mean, as long as the rain holds off, what I think it will. As long as it's not 40 degrees, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Squib kick. kick. Down and fielded by 87. Eighty-two. I think that's Joe Unker. If it's eighty-two, yes, it is. Our kicker, our fearless kicker, Joe Unker. We really wanted a, them to try like a forty-five-yard field goal last game with him. Coach wouldn't do it though. Last home game. Yes. Hey, now if he's kicking with the wind, I know that 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 does make a difference kicking too. South. Usually with that wind, all of a sudden she gets pretty wet in a hurry. To the south of us, looks like it's got a little drops going on there. So. Okay, 17 seconds left for the Red Hawks inside Maybe try to get something, something big here close to midfield, and if not. Another rollout. Well covered by Hudson, well covered. Great coverage right there by Messmore, number two. Our receivers just quite haven't got a chance to get a little bit more space on, the, on their, their coverage, man. So the opportunity is there, and he's had the time, but that's probably the hardest throw for a quarterback is if you're right-handed to th run left and throw back to your right and be accurate. So that's normally he would like to roll out to your strong side and throw that way. So nine seconds left, second down for the Red Hawks. Let's see if coach decides to let her grip. We're gonna pitch gonna it stay to with Roush. Rat, Roush with Gavin. Maybe get out of bounds with three seconds left. All right, barring anything crazy, this will be the last play of the first half with three seconds to go. And again, we want to thank our sponsors so very much that uh, allow this to happen. Uh, we picked a couple of new sponsors up this week, so we appreciate you, everything you do for our school and our for com community and our pride in our I mean, program. We would not be able to do this without them. Literally, we wouldn't be able to do this without them. So no, we no. thank them all, and we've got them running there in the bottom, and during our timeouts and such, so thank you to all those sponsors. Knack will kneel. That'll be the end of the first half, so impressive by Hudson as they take a 14-0 lead into halftime. We've got the band and I think the dance team here at halftime, so you want to stay and take a peek at that. If not, we'll be back in 15 minutes.
blame you. You told me to unmute. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
La Teresa Mexican Grill and Seafood has the best Mexican food in town. With daily food and drink specials, a fun atmosphere, and the best food around, La Teresa will make you feel like family. Make sure to follow them on Facebook to keep up to date on all their daily specials, and please visit them at either their trail location on 2nd Street or their Toledo location on Business Highway 30. Williams Welding and Fabrication, located in Trayer, Iowa. This is Pat Williams, and he can help you out with all your fabrication, welding, and repair needs. Pat can do it for your house, your business, or even your farm. So if you need any help, please give Pat a call at 319-239-2041. The Junkyard, located on 2nd Street in Traer, is the place to go for all your sports watching needs. With five big screens, the Junkyard is your place to watch North Tama, college, and professional sporting events, including those on ESPN+, Plus, BTN+, Plus, and Flow Sports. They also have food trucks regularly and specials weekly, so check out their Facebook page for more information. Of the Appraisal Junkyard in Real Estate. This is Jamie Howard and Madison Howard, and they can help you out with all your appraisal and real estate needs. If you're looking to buy or sell any residential, commercial, or agricultural properties, Jamie and Madison are here for you. Please visit them on 2nd Street or give them a call at 1-877-844-SOLD. Hometown Foods, located at 422nd Street in Traer, is open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We offer daily homemade lunch specials for your work week from 11 to 1 Monday through Friday, as well as our famous sub sandwiches, salads, and wraps. Proudly, we are Hometown Foods with Hometown Values. Harmson Seed offers Bear, Syngenta, and Corteva traded corn and Enlist E3 beans. We are located northwest of Traer. Give us a call for all your seed needs. With over a century of service, Farmer Savings Bank and Trust has you covered for all your banking needs, whether that be for yourself, your business, or your farm. Visit them at their Traer location on the corner of 2nd Street and Highway 63. Or give them a call at 319-478-2148. It takes a team effort to ensure a successful future. That's why Farmers Mutual Insurance, your local Grinnell Mutual member insurance company, and Grinnell Mutual are celebrating the accomplishments of our student-athletes across every sport. We recognize the dedication it takes to work and play hard. Your display of teamwork makes it easy to trust in tomorrow. Trust in Tomorrow is a registered trademark of Grinnell Mutual Reinsurance Company. For over 35 years, iCamp Insurance has provided quality protection and personalized customer service to their clients. They can protect your home, vehicle, farm, crops, business, and your recreational activities. Please visit them at one of their two locations on Main Street in Dyser or on 2nd Street right here in Trent. NT Dollars for Scholars is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to make sure every graduating Red Hawk that would like a scholarship has the opportunity to receive one. Last year, North Tama Dollars for Scholars was able to give out 23 $1,000 scholarships to the class of 2022, and they would like to add to that this year. If you can help out in any way, please visit their website at northtama.dollarsforscholars.org. All right, we're back here at the end of halftime. Uh, Hudson Pirates lead the North Tama Redhawks 14-0 at the start of the second half. I'm here with Rick Samuelson. I'm Tyson Roberts. We've seen a pretty uh, dominating uh, performance by the Hudson defense so far. What adjustments do you think are gonna, North Tama's going to have to make here in the second half, Coach? Uh, I think the only thing we need to do is just cut down on our mistakes. 
uh, turnovers, offside, bad snaps, procedure penalties and stuff like that. So we, it's there, you just have to execute. And now we're, if you're coming from left to right, as you see, you're gonna see a good stiff wind coming from the north here and maybe a, a, a rain something coming in here, but it might change the outlook of the game dras drastically. And because it was, I would say first half, it was a weather was great for throwing the ball. The second half might be more of a conservative run program. So we'll see uh, again, a two or three plays different, go swing the other way. Um, we're in it. We're, we're playing well, and uh, let's see what second half and the homestand does for us. I mean, really, the North Tama defense, like you said, has not has done a pretty good job at least. I mean, they've stopped the run pretty well here for Hudson, which they like to do, but their quarterback, uh, Camden Davis, he's had a couple good passes there for touchdowns on some out routes, and, uh, I mean, he's done a pretty good job of being elusive. Yeah, I think he's kind of been the, the difference maker for them tonight Agreed. on offense oh, yeah. because everything runs through him, and... You know, the size and the skill set that he has, if I was a coach, yes, I'd use that also. So can we counter back with our offense and get a good, strong uh, possession in here, get a few first downs, and if you're going from left to right, uh, it's easier to throw with the win than in against because I can't remember if we were going to receive and, and uh, the second half kickoff. If you're no, it would be Hudson win. receiving well, the kickoff, but I can't remember which way. We'll find out in a hurry here because yeah. whoever has to go north in the wind in the fourth quarter, throwing the ball might be a little bit more difficult. So, again, you got to take care of those elements that are going out there and adjust your game just a little bit. In. But I, I am seeing a lot of improvement on our, our young Red Hawks. They're executing their plays. Again, we're, you're young and experienced for the most part. Uh, some of our seniors were not out last year and came out this year. So again, you're, you're, you're playing with three or four seniors with experience. Basically, two of them have played with on varsity time, and then so the rest of them are learning to be that. So they're young and experienced, but we are developing. We're getting better every week. Fans, are you ready? We are ready to start this second half. In this rivalry game, there needs to be like a trophy or like the, what, the Highway 63 showdown well, or something that sounds cooler than that. Knowing that you're an Iowa State <laughs> alumni, I think basically you just want one trophy to come back to Ames oh, for geez. after a long we deal. Well, you got to bring it in. You know, eventually it's going to happen. We, we, we know that. So uh, hopefully tomorrow. But I tell you what, I don't think either fan base is very confident about that game tomorrow. <laughs> well, it may be the most watched game there is because they're maybe not thinking it's going to be one-sided either. So It should be a close. I mean, the spread is down to, I think, three and a half now. Well, both those teams, different quarterback, different situation, different skill set on some people, maybe some unknown stuff. Um, the Hawks never really show their tricks in their bag right off the bat. They save them for when they need them. But, again, special teams play saved them last week so that it did i mean they have the best punter in the nation he's heisman he's got to be a heisman front runner right now i'm kind of joking but i'm well, probably well, not special teams heisman i mean maybe. he's <laughs> very good connect with a kickoff and it that's should be a penalty go out of bounds, bounds. as it I will i believe that comes out to the what 35 35 yeah. i just hope iowa state opens it up with deckers he has almost every iowa high school passing record and he's dropped 30 pounds over the where's summer. he from what what home what uh, is the school uh, west sioux okay northwest iowa long tall dutch country i mean he he came in he was like two 240 250 last year and he's down to like just over 200 but anyway lean mean throwing machine he so. likes to sling it so hudson has a chance here to again take the drive two possessions versus one here almost so First and 10 and a 35 for the Pirates going from south to north. But yeah, the Red Hawks will have the win here in this third quarter as Hudson goes into more of a breeze as there was at the beginning of the game. Borscherding's got his first open space of the game, really, and he gets close to a first down. Execu long, good execution for the offensive line there. He kind of darted in and then and broke it outside when there's containment from the tackle in there on the defensive end, so...
They're going to run him again, and yep. he's got a first down. So as I figured, Coach, they're, they're going to start going back to their, their, their blueprint, their DNA, uh, whatever term you want to use. So basically, they're going to come up front. And the year that they had their state championship, there was a similar format that this team had. They basically wore you down physically, and you were able to stay with them. I mean, quite honestly, it's a lot, a lot like uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes play football. And then they put that stranglehold on you, and they got a lead, and they're just going to run it and not let you just control the clock after they get yep. a lead, if they do, if their offense can score a touchdown. Yes. Sometimes you can win without one now. So. Well, again, <laughs> 20 years straight, the longest active head coach in the country. So either that or very, we're a very friendly fan base that, that uh, just loves to stay in there and win. But... Every two or three years, Coach seems to find up that 10-2 and two team that makes a bowl game, a New Year's Day bowl game. So that's what is tough to do nowadays. Second and seven, almost at midfield for the Pirates. Have not attempted a pass yet this half. Still have not. Horshooting goes up the middle for maybe three or four. So our defense seems to be adjusting to the the throw and the run both. We're, we're taking a couple steps back, I think, defensively, and then sh trying to shoot gaps once it's committed. But again, the game plan keep, kind of keeps us guessing a little bit. We just have to execute up front, fill your hole, stop your man in the hole, don't let him drag you down five or six yards down the field on you to prevent a first down. Davis, that one was a little too high there for Mess Moore. It'll be fourth and four on the Red Hawk 48. We'll see what the Pirates do at a spot similar to this, maybe even a little closer there in the second quarter. They punted, and I believe Davis I, is back to punt. I'm sure that they will, but we're not necessarily putting any back to do that. So are we going to go all in here in the punt block or not? And we do. Oh. We do. Shire got close it's a very high punt got a good bounce there for the Pirates and uh, Red Hawks will start about their own 23 yard line again we are we are going to be playing with a slight wind to our back if we're going to throw the ball it's much more advantageous he's probably northwest to southeast direct and so from his right to left is coming across his back as coach gives him the play Red Hawks will cut huddle up again with 926 in the third quarter and really, there was only one drive I remember in the first half of the Red Hawks where and Kanak had some kind of a, a rhythm there. And if he could just complete a couple passes, they'll get in their rhythm. It can do some damage. We'll, we'll see. Hudson defense has done a really good job on them so far. There's their setting up that. Oh, but I think that was a forward pass. It was. And that, again, they're trying to set up that play a little bit. And it's difficult because you want to put a little touch on the ball, but you cannot you got to get it there quick enough for Schreier to actually get some time, hold the ball, and take a look and survey and try to make that first guy miss. So you're hoping his skill set will make that first guy miss. Hey, we're back to 153 people. I think we were over 175 there for a little bit, but as people come back from halftime, let us know where you're watching from. We love to hear and see who you're cheering for. Knack with the fake pitch. Ooh, big hit right there. Not much, maybe a couple. Another third and long for the Red Hawks. Getting familiar with each other's plays, reading people on defense and realizing, okay, what they're gonna do, uh, see some tendencies and stuff like that. So we, we can execute, it's there. We just gotta be able to do it consistently. And uh, you know, a, a good pass play right now could spark things up for the Red Hawks and let's see if they can dial up a uh, play that will do that for them. They're going to go empty backfield here. It's third and eight on their own 25. Some pressure. The screen again. There's Roush. We just can get a block there. Nope. And it almost developed. We couldn't quite string that up there, but that was a screen play again, trying to get your backers in there to go for the, the run and didn't quite get the first down. So we're talking 
fourth and two. So I'm not going to be surprised if they go for it. Will here. the gunslinger sling it again? We'll see. Maybe this is the spark. You get a fourth down conversion here and sparks the offense. We'll see what happens. Oh, they're looks, gonna go power eye. Looks like they're gonna go for it. Roush, or sorry, Connect's gonna, nope, he has stood up. He maybe got to the line of scrimmage. Tried to do a quick snap. And Connect tried to go right up the middle, nothing there. And Hudson will stop the Red Hawks on downs and get the ball on a very short field. Levi LaRue's watching from the end zone. I'm waving to him, but he's not looking. <laughs> we'll see. It's a little. It's a little delayed. So nobody wants to watch us anyway in person. They just like to hear what we. I'd have be to remiss say. if I, I believe there is a group watching in, in Hudson at the Entrican household. So I, I have to give them a shout out. An excellent wrestling family. I, I know them quite well. I uh, um, I, I loved watching them wrestle. Yeah. I hated them when they wrestled us. Uh, of of course. course, you know. But, but I, I told Susan I would give them a shout out, and they she's said a they're, nice they're going to be watching. I, yep, I met her several times up at Walmart in Cedar Falls. Wonderful person. Poor shooting stiff arm and Shard jumps on his back. They seem to be able to contain our defensive ends on that play and move them interior, so. Colt's uncle watching from Denver, Colorado. Hopefully, let's get some good luck for him and get something going here on offense. But first they gotta stop this Hudson run game that's found a kind of their second win here in the second half. But you're right, I mean it's you maybe warm down some. It's and just, it's just, just come, it. it just comes down to execution. Do you execute or not? And uh, your system has to work. Better job there by the Red Hawks as Borshardine gets maybe three. Kind of a little bit of delay there. So it looks about second down and about seven for the Pirates with seven minutes left in the third quarter. I mean, they're so. doing exactly what they want to do now. They're bleeding the clock and they're just getting positive yards. Well, our defense, it's, it, it's now or never. Let's, I think we can get a stop here. Turn things around. And we do blitz on that and they stretch out the blitz. And I'm not quite sure if he ran that wide enough to get the first down. That was a good job by Richter as the Red Hawks kept stretching him, stretching him, and he just kept going and he gets, he's gonna be two yards short, I think. I mean, even if it looks tough for us right now, it's still, it's only 14 to nothing. That's two yep. scores here. So if we can keep it into a two score game, makes all the difference in the world. So again, Hudson is it's tough for a defensive coach because you're not sure what they're going to run and they have so many options to do. So we've got to get some penetration by our interior line. Put a man in motion. Davis is going to try to go outside. What a nice tackle right there by Dubuque, stop. number eight. Caleb DeBoof, that was a good tackle right there. Read that, saw the opening, ran in through that right a quick, made the stop, so. Brings up a fourth down and two, so. They're going quick. They're going quick. Bring in the play, make some adjustments here. Are we trying to draw them off sides? Coach gives him a signal there, what he wants him to call, so they're waiting at the last minute to See what's going to happen here. Obviously, he's looking for a number on his chart on his arm. So, so or are we asking for a delay of game here? No, they're going to call sure. timeout, and they do call timeout. Trying to draw him off sides, and it'll be fourth and two on the twelve, and we are going to go back to some of our wonderful sponsors. Chelsea Savings Bank. Stop into one of our family-owned banks near you. We offer multiple locations to help with all your financial needs. Our locations include Traer, Belle Plaine, Chelsea, Van Horn, and Victor. Chelsea Savings Bank. We are not just another customer, and we're not just another bank. You know when you buy a bag of salad and it gets all brown and soggy? Cookies don't do that. Check out Country Road Cookies for your custom sugar cookie and sweet treat needs. Find us on Facebook and Instagram, Country Road Cookies, 
located on a country road between Cher and Dyser. All right, we are back, and I think they're going to attempt a field goal into the wind here. And again, coach is probably developing his system. Can we get a field goal done some later on down the year? 29 yard field goal attempt. And it and looks good looks right good. up the middle there. So Right down the middle. Again, execution for Hudson. North Damon now with five minutes and 30 seconds, 36 seconds left in the third quarter. Uh, backs against the wall here. And let's see if we can get some spark. We just need a play. If we just get a play in there, a couple first downs. Um, and get the crowd back in the game. Samuelson, you're getting called out again by Walston. He's, you must have said Caleb DeBoof, not Lucas. I didn't even catch it. Well, I, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. DeBoof, I apologize greatly. Well, it was Walston who was giving you it. Champion Enterprises Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning provides residential and commercial services to Trair and surrounding areas. Locally owned and operated by Josh and Jared, who are dedicated to perform exceptional service to you and the community. Installing top-of-the-line ring heating and cooling products to keep you warm in the winter and cool in the summer. For licensed professional services, call Champion Enterprises. Team right now. Oh, Kuchera. Oh, Kuch. Leave him alone. He's old. <laughs> <laughs> Only Nathan can say that to you. <laughs> oh. I'm not old. I'm mature. There's a difference there, there okay? Oh. I'm sure Nathan's just chuckling away right now watching this. I think he's having a little too much fun. He always had too much fun in school. There's, he has a Kacharic twinkle in his eye. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, no. Oh, no. Never a dull moment. Picked up by Roush, number seven. There's a gap there a gap. for him, and he could. There goes Gavin. Oh, just oh, a Gavin step or two, almost. and it was. Act, uh, Gavin Roush has had a good special teams outing here on every kickoff, so, so far, so now getting a little get space. Now just some space. Timing and space, timing and space. So now we're also not closer to midfield. That helps us out open up the playbook just a little bit. Hey, Clayton Bolt's got someone watching from Vegas. Maybe they're gambling. Hopefully they're not gambling on the game. Is it I, over I mean, under? Can you bet on high school? I mean, I I know you, in I Vegas you can, know you can you can you can bet on anything <laughs> in Vegas. Joking, you can't bet on high school games, but Knack is under getting pressure here. here. Throws it out of bounds. Good job. In the area of Gavin Rouse. Yeah, 59. Caden Kryle was chasing him down and. Now they're getting some pressure on them. And the, I mean, the Hudson Corners have done a good job. Haven't been really any wide open Red Hawks. Up to this point. So. Up to this point. And for Cole, he, he has been under pressure a lot. He has not really had to sit back there and, and sit and wait and wait till things open. So he's either had to be in motion on the run and sometimes that cuts off half the field for you. But Siemens in motion, they give him the ball. Oh, what, a, yep, that's gonna be a. I think that might be a face mask, but I am not sure. Well, Ingemels just grabbed whatever he could and threw him down. Well, those jerseys are so darn tight, coach. You gotta grab something. Yeah, I don't know if that, that was a horse. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he grabbed him by, but nothing. Well, there, there's malicious a, there. He's just yeah, trying to. Definite change of direction there in the body. Yeah. So, Speaking of Logan, he's got fans watching from Florida, Coral Gables. That's a good 15-yard penalty. That's All right, maybe that's the best offensive, <laughs> best offensive play we've I mean, had this half. So Maybe that's the boost North that's, Hama needs. Yeah, I all mean, we need is a spark around something. the other side here. So just execute the play. Is it? Plenty of time to do this. Just execute your plays. Oh, Connect just drops it. I don't know if he was going to pitch it right away to, to Schreier or what, but. 
Sometimes later in the game, you have a tendency to like, where's this ball going to go? You're confident that you're going to get the ball snap where it needs to be. And maybe sneak a little peek before that kick gets in your hands. Hey, uh, this is some pretty high praise here. Uh, Hosky <laughs> says that you are the Madden of Tama County. Say that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to be compared to John Madden? I don't know. I don't know if I'm famous or infamous. I'm not sure what you want to go by. Any press is good press, isn't Just it? Just take it, yeah. There you go. Going for long air connect. Good reception to his good friend, Josh Dostal. Picked up about, about four yards on there. So yeah. it looks like maybe there's a bit of development in here. We're playing with the wind. We have to use that as much as possible for the next four minutes. Otherwise, we will be going into the wind, but that doesn't seem to stop Hudson on the nope. way on back, so. I mean, I think this is a, North Hamlin needs to score on this drive. They need, I don't wanna say it's a must score, but it, I mean. They need some momentum they, here, they so something. this is a good start. Got pretty good protection. It's a screen to Schreier. Screen He's got to Schreier great this grass. time. And he'll be up over across for a first down. Finally got that screen going. I think that's working because basically if you're coaching back there, you're telling your safeties and your corners nobody gets by you. So they're playing maybe just a little bit deep for that long ball comes underneath. I think Schreier's hurt. Mike, Mike Schreier comes up shaking up a little bit. I don't want to say I know what it is, but I think I know what That's it is. That's okay. We all have eyes. Doesn't feel great. Well, there you go. There's maybe some momentum there by the Red Hawks. Well, that again, you're, you're th three good three touchdowns. You can pull this one out here. You just get some confidence, get some momentum here, and execute your plays. We're going to go empty backfield here now as coach is kind of getting a little more committed to spreading the field. Snack falls forward for maybe four. Positive yardage is on, on this drive is, is a premium. So if we can continue to move the sticks, get positive yards, stay away from third and long situations, that gives you more choice as a coach. So... Coach signals a play in. Connect just, I don't know if that, oh, we got some extracurriculars, it's all good. Um, he sees it basically, yeah. uh, Hudson's starting to stunt on the outside, trying to make double pass rush. And they really don't have a linebacker in the middle there, so they're trying to play a little bit deep and a little bit soft. And so he's just going to take what the defense gives him, which is, again, you're developing your young sophomore quarterback, making good decisions. Two minutes and 11 seconds left in the third quarter. Red Hawks go empty bat field again. It's a developing play. Crossing route and oh, almost nice. just off the fingertips there. Michael Schreier, I believe. Yep. You could tell Knack was looking that way. He was waiting for that to develop and looking for him to make his cut. A little cut and go to the corner of the end zone just a little too far. Hey, we're up to 179. I think that's the most tonight. Okay. We'll take it. We get 200, though. Come on. Okay, we're going for 200. We're going here, for two. Folks. Thank we're, you. We're going for two. Coach Roberts wants 200, so. Definitely. Looking to the end and zone got again. Got playing time. Scrambles a little bit here. Looking for somebody deep. He's got a man He's wide open. Bat open. Oh, so close, Josh Dolstow. And Dolstow was open in the end zone, waving. His favorite I, target uh, again. You know, that bread and butter's worked for them a long time. Just a a little bit strong in the weight room there, and but that's a well-executed play. That's a tough play to make, and it was there. So, you know, Red Hawk fans, we are capable of coming back on this game. So it's still only the third quarter with about a minute and 45 seconds left, third and 10. <coughs> I 
They go empty backfield again. There's that play again, but oh. No, we got Hudson a, mid, we got a middle linebacker looking for that. Yep. He was up there looking for that, and Hudson kind of saw what was going to happen, so. Well, here we go, fourth and 10 on this, or fourth and nine, eight. Here we go. Biggest play of the game so far, right here. Well, when we score, there'll be bigger ones. So let's 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 make this happen here. So Schreier in the backfield goes off to the right. <coughs> Looking across his body. Oh well, well. Good job, Stop number by four. I said. Key and Kryle just knocks it away. It's exactly to, what you got to do. Yep, rolled out right, tried to come across the body, and hopefully things are going through, but it didn't quite get executed. So, But that was a nice drive for the Red Hawks. We'd like to have some come away with some points there. How about a turnover? That is exactly what we need right <laughs> now. That would be help Scoop and score. They've had a couple turnovers. Hudson has this game, but they've always fallen on top of them. So... And if I am Hudson, I think I'm I'm gonna be three yards in a cloud of dust for a while here. Keep that clock moving and get yourself out of here and get a couple first downs. But can we answer the task here? Well, oh, there it is. Oh, oh. Borsenick fell on it. Yeah, I, I, I almost spoke, called it. I spoke too soon. <laughs> They've been able to Man. pick up on that fumble every single time that it comes out of there, so. Uh, Timeout, Red Hawks. Yep. Okay, we're going to go to some more sponsors. Bush and Lechtenberg Law Office assists clients with an assortment of legal matters. If you need a will or a trust set up, want to buy or sell real estate, need to probate an estate, or simply need your income taxes prepared, Bush and Lechtenberg Law Office can help. Their office is located at 601 First Street, just across from the post office. You can also give them a call at 319-478-8640. Fox Ridge Winery, located in northern Tamworth County, northwest of Traer, has been a family-run winery since 2004. This beautiful location can seat up to 100 people in its banquet room, Perfect for your grad party, wedding reception, business meeting, or holiday party. Additional seating is available on the deck overlooking the winery as well. Be sure to check out Fox Ridge Winery on Facebook for upcoming events, tours, and tastings. We have 45 seconds here to go in the third quarter. Hudson with a 17-0 lead over North Tama. Second and 11. Pitch out to Schneider. Oh, and we've got another little. They have been so fortunate on their fumbles to either cover them up right away. We got a flag at probably a hold where they threw it. In the backfield. That's, yep, not a, that's usually not a defensive penalty. Coach, that is so. usually a hold, and it's because it got strung out, and Hudson will go back 10 yards. Holding penalties are your friend on defense. Colt's favorite ant is watching from Minnesota. I wonder if there's that's going to cause some issues there. Favorite ant. I don't know if he's got multiple. And well, I always tell my there. nephews I'm their favorite uncle, so. Well, of course, you. I'm sure you are. I like to think so, but. Second and 11. That's not right. It's second and 20. Oh, 21. 20. There we go. Now they get it correct. Pitch out again to Schneider. Oh, he's Miss got room, and he is gone, is. unless he can get caught here. Can we get it? Well, we don't get it. Devorah by Hudson there. Oh, don't do that. No. Oh, oh, there's the flag. Hudson, what were you thinking? Your guy is gone. He was gone, too. I he don't was think Devorah was going to catch him. Don't clip, and 
I'm sorry. I sound maybe a little bit hus and biased here, but it's like that that is yeah. gone. So he was, and that's a sophomore. Schneider's got some wheels there. Yes, he had a great hole to run through, and he, yes, but you know, kudos there to Jared Dvorak because if he doesn't, if he does, if he gives up on that play, it's a touchdown. No, but and he, he he try. I mean, that's why you never as never a, know what's going to happen. As a coach, you want. 11 guys out there exactly like that that does not give up on a play and runs that thing down. So well, if he doesn't run it down, it's six. If he does run it down, there's a penalty, and it goes back. So Impressive run right there by Schneider. He, I thought he was gone, and then, but, I mean, point Dvorak with his wheels makes it a play. But, yeah, that, that block didn't need to happen. He was almost in the end zone. Moving back to the 15, and it'll be first and goal with 24 seconds to go. I'm sorry, 21 yard line. No, I'm. I mean, that's a, to me as a coach, that is probably the most impressive play of the game for us. Is you are coming across the field, you're giving a senior who's coming across the field, giving everything he got, and getting that last play to stop a touchdown. So. Kudos to Jared. Blitz up the middle, picked up. Richter doing a good job of staying on his he, feet. He, he did not want to come down. He's got a low, strong center of gravity there and a player of legs on him, and you hit him high. He's good balance you know bouncing off that first tackle so well i believe that is going to be the end of the third quarter hudson still shutting out the red hawks 17 to 0 and we're going to go back to some of our wonderful sponsors here Randolph's Incorporated, located on South Main Street in Traer, has over 100 years of experience in petroleum transportation and product delivery. With their knowledge, dedicated staff, and excellent drivers, they will get your products loaded and delivered in a safe and professional manner, all while exceeding your expectations. For more information, please visit RandolphsInc.com or call them at 319-313-7953. The rooster crows, but the hen delivers the goods. Retro Rooster, located in beautiful downtown Traer, has something for everyone. Funky, junky, unique antiques, home decor, and so much more. Our man cave is loaded with sports collectibles, bar decor, farm finds, and signs. We are open Tuesday to Friday, 11 to 5, Saturday, 9 to 2, Sunday, 10 to 3. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram, Retro Rooster. All right, we're back here. We've got one quarter to go. Hudson leads 17 to zero, and they're going to have the ball second and seven on the Red Hawks 17 yard line, with their wind at the back for the at the back for the rest of the game. So, yeah, Red Hawks dodged a bullet there as it looked like it was going to be an apparent touchdown, but a clipping call or a block in the back is going to brought it back. See if Red Hawks can get something out of that. And they're going to go for a slant all, all oh, the way there. Goodness. That one is a little throw, yep. throw low in the bread basket there. But again, if you're that wide receiver, you're going, dang, I had that one. I haven't seen one for a long time. I want to have that one back. But to his credit, that was just a little bit low, thrown low. But that was, again, execution, coach. It comes down to a little bit of execution. Okay, one spread way out left, two here to the right. They're going to run up the middle of Borshening. He barrels up across for a first down. It'll be first and goal from about the five. And I'm beginning to notice body language here, Coach. 
on both sides of the ball. So see a difference there between Hudson ready to go. They've got confidence. They've got all the momentum. Red Hawks a little dejected. It only takes a play to turn that around, so. Like you said, Hudson's, what, three fumbles, three or four, but they've gotten all of them, or they've gone out so of bounds? So we go full tilt blitz on that, bringing both backers into the A-gap there. So coach is going to start gambling here, and I think I would too. And we have a flag on the play. Probably another hold. Hopefully a holding, so, you know, Good things happen when you decide that we're going to make them happen instead of letting them happen. And Hold on, Hudson. Well, we outnumbered them in between the tackle, and somebody's got to try to hold two guys up. And luckily, it was caught by the official. And again, the Red Hawks are kind of flirting with... with uh, Stay in a thin line there between staying in the game and, and letting it get out of control here. But we, we've we kept our fancy in there and done what we needed to do. Back to pass. And he just overthrows Messmore. And that was kind of a different kind of route. Yeah. Um, a lock like their touchdown they had in the first half where they're trying to go one way and come back. We tried to do that, but couldn't quite execute that that exact same play, so. Haven't said this yet, but some upcoming North Tama events, things that we're not gonna have on here, but next week, pretty light week. Cross country goes to South Tama on Monday, and volleyball goes to GMG on Thursday, the top-ranked North Tama girls volleyball team. Another huge win last night. Yes. Over uh, number three, GR. The yes. second win over that their rival here in the last week. Richter slowed down by Roush, but then taken down after a short gain. Yeah, still ranked number one and had a real, some really good teams at the tournament last Saturday. Yeah, uh, there, is, there is union there, obviously, and and uh, coaches kind of stiffened up their tournament that they've had. From GR was there, ago. ranked number three. So Grundy ended up winning it, their ranked team in 2A. We're not we're not just taking who we're going to take. We're getting better than average teams in there. And coach's philosophy is let's play the best if you want to be the best. And it's worked that to a number one ranked team. Roll him out to the right. He's got a man. Oh, oh good hit right there, though. Nice play by Josh Dolso. Dolso with a big hit. And he was looking to pick that thing off. Of course, he's, he's so good at playing wide receiver. I yeah. think he thought the ball was thrown yeah, to him. So, I talk about cross country too. I um, mean, we're having a good year. Yeah. Um, our girls' numbers are not. We're not really deep team, but we do have some people that are going to make an A. And and coaches like me, I, I really don't care where we're rated at the beginning of the year, but come the district cross country meet, that's when we're going to show up. Yep. You know, girls team got the state last year. Field goal attempt Not is going to be quite. short. I think that snap there was a little bit yeah. off and the hold was a little bit slow. So, again, we dodge another bullet here. It's still a 17-point, three-score game here. So, But now our uh, wind is in our face, and so we're going to have to execute here with 10 minutes and 21 seconds left to go. Because um, I told the team today, it says, it's too warm. We, we want it so cold and snow and... We do run better in the in the cold, so we'll see how that if that comes and happens. First and ten for the Red Hawks here. Catch right away, but tackled right away. I think Coach is trying to set that up that uh, they're going to bite on that thing, maybe one time too many, and see if they can get them to bite on that for a longer play. So. We're moving the ball a little bit quicker now here with less than 10 minutes in the game. Keith Kennedy watching from you and I at the volleyball tournament. Hopefully we're doing okay here, Keith. Another designed run for the Red Hawks. Bring up third down and about five.
Oh. Ball came out. Well, that's the theme of the game. If there's a fumble, you land on your own so far. Yeah, so. I mean, I don't know how many times it's happened for these teams. And I'm not sure, Coach, if we actually had a fumble turnover in no, the game. There has not been a By a fumble. I don't think so. Not by fumble, just the interception. Yes. Red Hawks are checking their numbers on their bands. Fourth and six from at 8.49 on the clock. So here's another. And, and false start. A lot of dead ball calls here tonight for the Red Hawks. That, is, that has kind of been our Achilles heel right there. It's something before the play starts just doesn't quite mesh. Again, you're shuffling your offensive line around a little bit and trying to develop that one person or situation that can be consistent. Fourth and 12 for the Red Hawks. <coughs> Got a man wide open, Roush. And he should have the first down by about a yard. Wide yes, open. That was a long throw that by was. Cole Kanak. Long throw. But that had a little bit of arc on that, so he can adjust to the ball. So it goes down to like a about a 10-yard gain, but he threw the ball. That was like a 50-yard like, yeah, throw. That's not an easy play. Now the Red Hawks are gonna hurry it up here. 8.15 to go. They need three scores. Got a man. Oh, oh, great job right there by Kryle to break it up. And, you know, Hudson with the advantage of, okay, guys, down in distance, let nobody get behind you, probably playing 20 yards off the ball and can gauge that ball coming across the middle. Could have been maybe, if you'd like to have that, maybe a second or two earlier on that one. Brings down second and 10. Incomplete passes, stops the clock, so... I think that's what we're going to be steadily doing here. Screen to Schreier. See if he can get something. Got maybe six. Manageable third down. Again, we've executed plays from time to time. We're just trying to string four, five, six, or seven of them in a row, which makes a difference. Connect right up the middle, first down. Oh, and he fumbled, Ooh, that and was I think Hudson has hit. it this time. He got hit hard. That was quite a hit. He might not, he'll be feeling that tomorrow and morning. There's the turnover. Yo, know, it's his right arm, you can yep. tell. He is, he's going to feel that tomorrow morning. That was a good look. Yep. Big legal hit right there. I couldn't see who. I think it was a running back, 26. I think that's who that was, but 36? I'm not sure. Is that Borshading who came I think, up? I think that was, but only the film will tell when yeah. you look at it tomorrow. So 7.30 on the clock here. Change of possession. First and 10 for Hudson on the 44-yard line. Yes, we could use a turnover. Pitch to Borshening, tries to get outside. Well, there's your th three yards and a cloud of dust cloud right of there. dust, maybe a little bit wider. North Tame is probably gonna be calling a timeout here. They so. will, they're only gonna have one lap, but we are gonna go back. We've got a couple more, a couple more sponsors to go. The Trail Lions Club has been servicing the Trail area for decades. With several donations to the Salt and Pepper Shaker Gallery, the Winding Stairs Festival, the Tama County Food Bank, North Tama After Prom, BASIC, and many other organizations and efforts, the Trail Lions Club has been a leader in humanitarian efforts. To join the Trail Lions Club, go to their monthly meetings, the fourth Monday of every month at the Trail Library, and please visit them on Facebook at Trail Lions Club. Stop on into the windup and meet all of our bartenders. We have two pool tables, a dartboard, and a Touchstones jukebox. We have a large variety of adult beverages, soft drinks, and frozen pizza. Come watch the Red Hawks with us on 2nd Street in Trare, right next to La Teresa.
All right, we're back after the North Hammond timeout. They've got one left. Second and eight, Hudson. Trying to milk the clock here as they lead 17 to zero. Four shooting right up the middle, nothing there. Trying to, Hushik trying to strip the ball, you could tell. Yep. But Horshing does a good job of holding on to it. That's a two back, a power eye formation there. So basically they are just gonna run that ball, which is strategically for them, keep possession, keep the clock moving. Right. Uh, force North Tama and to take all their timeouts out. Back to another timeout. We'll go get a couple more sponsors to go. So we've got a couple new sponsors, one of them being Spanky's Restaurant and Catering. Uh, I've eaten there before. Great food, great place to be. Not just the restaurant, but also got the catering you said down in uh, Tama, right, Coach? Yes, they do. And uh, both sons are in my classes. There so. you go. Well, Spanky's does a lot of things here for North Tama. Mandy Bolt's a legend, so. Yeah. Sorry, we don't have our, our fancy little uh, voiceover yet. Oh, there's Another our fumble. turnover. And and North Tama's got it. I believe they got it. Well, we've been calm for that all night long to finally get a fumble go our way. Don't connect with it, seven minutes to go. Need a score here quick. Out of timeouts. Just execute first, execute every play all the time. We've had spurts, we've had situations that come so close, so just execute your plays. Get that first touchdown on the board. Try the onside, which Nortema has Done a pretty good job here in the last couple of years getting onside kicks, but getting a little ahead of myself. They need to score first. There's and a little trick. Oh, 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 I think that was Caleb Ham number 28. I think he got a hand on it. Well, it was a hitch and go. They were, threw the ball out the flat and wanted Schreier to get something kind of behind. They're trying to do a little trick play. Trouble is, it tricked Schreier a little bit where that was <laughs> going, so... Brings up second and 19. A little confusion by the Red Hawks on where we need to be and our formation here. Roush. Another hitch to Roush. Broke one tackle, but then taken down by Kryl. And there's a case of a Red Hawk that if you get, get some space, He's gone, but to Hudson's credit, there's help on the way, and if the first guy doesn't get him, they're very quick to close, so. And they have not given up. I don't even know what the biggest play, nor, I think Nortema's largest play tonight might be a 15-yard penalty. Have they gotten a 15-yard pass play? I can't, I can't think of one It's right coming now. up, Coach. Here we go. I think it's a little. Not yet. Into the wind. Into the wind. Makes a difference though when you're putting an arc on the ball, but at this point, you're gonna develop your team and you're gonna see what you got, so. Well, here we go, fourth and eight. Under six to go. Well, I think at this time with the clock less than six minutes, everything's fourth and eight, so. Yep. You wanna make parts of yardage and you wanna make it Ooh. some chunks. And a referee pointing at a fan in our student section here. Don't know what's going on there. Red Hawks break the huddle. Knack's gonna keep it, but he's not going anywhere. No. Brought down by Ingemels for a loss. And Hudson will take over on the Red Hawk 40. Red Hawks out of timeouts. I don't know if we're gonna see another pass by Hudson tonight. As if, North if, Tampa's out of timeouts. If I am coach of the Hudson Pirates, there will nothing be anything between the but the tackles and use that clock. But again, hats off to the Pirates. They have executed when they needed to, made timely plays, um, kept themselves fairly penalty free tonight. So not a, not a fancy win, No, but, but it's a good solid win. Didn't give up the big play. 
Didn't really let the Red Hawk offense get a lot of momentum going. Pitch to Messmore. He'll be brought down with a, he's keep going. There's your three or four yards, five. And as we go for the next couple of weeks, the Pi uh, Red Hawks will be going to Nashville Plainfield next week, and then I believe the long trip up north to St. Ansgar and uh, up by Minnesota on the road. So you better be talking a little bit of your chopper and clapper there, hey, up there in Minnesota country. That's too long. We're up to Nashville and then up to St. Ansgar. Two long road trips there. Yes. Then their next home game will be homecoming on the 30th of September against BCLUW. That will be the last, next game we have. That's a first down. Hudson goes to number two Grundy Center tomorrow, or next week. Then, then they'll get their challenge there. And that they will. Grundy Center has been and tested twice. They've got by Dyke New Hartford, and tonight they're wrestling – or excuse me, I'm, the coach slips out at me there. They're playing Wapsie Valley in the KWWL Woo! game of the night, well, so I'm looking at that should be very interesting here, listen, turnout. Here, listen, Hudson's next four games. They go to Grundy, then they go to Wapsie. At home against AGWSR, we know what they can do. And then they are at home against North Lynn, another ranked team. Ooch. Yeah, that's a tough uh, Ooch. That is a tough four-game stretch right there for Hudson. Richter's got some room. He is inside the 10 or right at the 10. But they are capable of being very competitive in all them games. I, they're executing well. They, they don't make gigantic mistakes. At least tonight they have not. They're, they're not flashy. They're not, you know, something that maybe will sell tickets at the booth all the time. But gets the job done. Winning is pretty. Sometimes it's ugly, but winning is pretty. And with the defense now that if the score holds in two game in three games only giving up fourteen points. And that's that's maybe the secret right there. It's impressive right there. I think Davis has shown that if they need to do some if they need to do some throwing, he can do it. He made some good plays there in the first half, which I think kinda opened it up for the run game because the run game wasn't getting there much in the first half. Davis well, did a good job. And their run game was him. Yep, and but they first came out throwing, and they were going to see if, they, hey, we're going to throw the ball. We're going to see what we're going to do. We're going to open up our, our playbook a little bit and execute it from there. But, again, consistency has is, is been on their favor tonight, and we just couldn't get those fumbles to go our way. I think it's a legal substitution by the Pirates. Too many, too many men on the field. Or too many, yeah. Uh, Nope, waving no, it off. waving it off. Okay. Maybe his math isn't any better than <laughs> I mean, mine. <laughs> I couldn't count to four, so <laughs> counting to 11 is even tougher. He must have not seen that one young guy sneak off in the <laughs> off yep. first. So. As the clock ticks down under three minutes. I don't know what the next... Uh, Sporting event, well, I'm sure it's a home volleyball game. I don't know when the next home volleyball game is, so that's the next time. Not next week, so the week after. Also don't know if Nashua Plainfield has a, or St. Ansgar has a, a way to watch those games. Well, you, I know for a fact that they have to exchange film nowadays. Yes. And on huddle, all you have to do is key something in. So, you know, back in the day, I'm dating myself here, the coaches would have to take the VCR and meet somewhere and, and basically and come playoff time, they had to have film that was within the last two games of the year. That's they crazy. couldn't pick out the first game of the year and see how much they changed. So, As we have some people saying, what is a VCR? Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> Thanks, LaRue. The, the next uh, home volleyball football game, volleyball game is the 20th against Colonesco, and that's the next game they'll have here. It'll probably be Keith and LaRue on the on the call for that game, but next home football game isn't for three weeks. It'll be homecoming. But I, I'm going to say we do have – it's there. It, it's there, Coach. We're young. We just got to develop consistency there. There's there's flashes of goodness. 
we haven't really self-destructed ourselves very much, uh, other than the pre-snap penalties. If we could get them, the consistency was there, and uh, there's light in the end of the tunnel. You would just like to have the light to happen every week. That's when we use a timeout with a minute to go, and we have one more sponsor, I believe. It is Wilson, am I right? So any any of your agricultural needs, you've got Wilson up there, just south of town. Give him a call. We'll have some something better than what I'm seeing right now by our next game. Well, if you've been in the North Tama community, you've seen Wilson tiling equipment, and a lot of agribusinesses in the area are using him quite well. So, And you always can see the sign on Highway 63 at can. any time. Not much this summer with the road construction. You exactly. had to go to the gravel well, it needs all to be the time. fixed anyway, so that's a good thing. But I believe they are our last sponsor. We Once again, we can't thank the sponsors enough because would not be able to do any of this without them. I don't know what we're up to for sponsors, but it's probably close to 20. We have like 33. 33. Okay, I'm not, I'm not smart. So <laughs> close we're, to we're going for 40, close Coach. To 20. We're going to go to 40. <laughs> can't count and can't, yeah. <laughs> Well, they are going to pass. Maybe. And it'll be turnover on downs with a minute to go. See if you can get a score in. You never like getting shut out. No, but I think Hudson decided to put in their... And this would be two weeks in a row that Nortema would be shut out. 36 sponsors. Thanks, LaRue. I'm glad that he's paying attention and listening. I said 20. Well, maybe Mr. LaRue will have to tell him to get it to 40. <coughs> yeah, get up to 40. Get it to 40. LaRue, do. 200 do, viewers and 40 you sponsors. And these kids, there we get, go. get on it. And also, we give a shout out to the high school kids. I mean, we're just talking like we think we know what we're talking about, but everything else is run by high school students. So Mr. LaRue's tech program is doing an it, awesome job. It at our has school. grown and it will continue to grow. It's amazing that these high school students doing all of this. So we thank them. Okay, there's got to be a. Okay. I, mean, I don't know. There's got to be a flag there when he's not going to give it to him. The officials are just going to let that go. He's not going to give it to him. I'm sponsor. Uh, Larue wants me to. I have not. What do you? What would the sponsorship be? I don't. I don't have one for you, Larue. I'm sorry, but um, I myself am not. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I haven't had anyone come talk to me about sponsoring. Maybe I would. We are always looking for sponsors. So I mean, give the school a call. Ask for Mr. Levi Larue and. He'll get you hooked up. Colt's going to try to go that again. He launches it and playing center oh. field there. That was Siemens back trying to get the catch. That was a good 60-yard throw by Colt. Yeah, into the wind. So that was the the, the skill is there. The, the the it's coming. You just as a coaching staff, you got to remain positive. It's there. Everything you need is there. We just got to execute it. And again. So many young people, eventually you've got to learn your lessons and, and mature because that comes in so valuable later on down the, the road. And this year it will come into play. So Might have some growing pains here, but it'll pay dividends. We've seen this with North Tama before, before they made those couple state playoff runs. I mean, there were a couple seasons there where you were two and seven or three and six and get the young guys some playing time. Yep. Siemens with the screen. First down. Middle screen again. So do you have a prediction for tomorrow? I mean, I know who you're saying is going to win, um, but I mean, um, I'm, a score I seriously want Iowa State to win based they, on the fact that Matt Campbell it, needs it. Eventually it's going to have, I think Matt Campbell probably is one of the best coaches in the country. I really seriously believe that because you, if you knew where he started from and what he has developed, and, you know, I, I believe Brock Purdy still has made it. He is. With, he's the third-string quarterback he's made for the 49ers. It with the 49ers so Mr. Irrelevant. Though, that's true. The last one uh, draft in NFL, but it's like. He I, definitely develops players. It, I, I, you know, I, I tell people, I says, once they, this could be going the other way. So 
again, thank our sponsors and congratulations to the Hudson Pirates for their win. And uh, have a nice weekend. Yeah, impressive win for the Pirates. We will see you for football in three weeks, volleyball in a couple of weeks. I want to thank Mr. Rick Samuelson here for stepping in and giving his insight and helping me out here. But, uh, yeah, for Rick Samuelson, I'm Tyson Roberts. Thank you for joining, and we will see you next game.